Hello my dear students, today we are going to study about body defenses, immunity and immunization. Okay, so let us start. What is body defense? Okay, our body has, I can say God has crafted our body in such a way that uh, it has its own immune system which can protect us from many diseases, right? Yes, so our body produces antibodies against various antigen which comes inside our body, right? And we have WBCs which plays a very important role to protect us from various infection through phagocytosis, okay? And our, uh, this, uh, the cells are so smart enough that they remember that this particular antigen has come and they produce antibodies against this and then what happens is next time when the same antigen will come in our body they remember so very nice mechanism which we are having okay so body defense against infections may be local systemic non-specific specific humoral and cellular now this our body's defense okay our body's defense against various infection can be at these different levels at local level for example if you get hurt okay there is a cut over here nicely it starts to heal right so it can be either local or systemic means the whole body either it can be specific non-specific humorous cellular level at the cell level okay that is at different level our body works for the defense okay against what against various infection any antigen this is what i said any antigen antigen is nothing but something foreign body okay it's not just a foreign body which comes inside okay and further causes damage our body remembers it and then produces antibodies against it okay so any antigen entering the body may stimulate single or generally multiple defense mechanisms not just one mechanism there are many things all together working to protect our body from those particular infection okay now here in FON related to FON we are only going to see very small part about body defense immunization and immunity in detail you are going to study in microbiology okay we are going to study in short so let us understand what is what are the types of immunity okay there are mainly two types of immunity one is active and the second one is passive immunity okay so in a simple form here i am brought for you what is active immunity active immunity is a type of immunity that an individual okay a person develops as a result of infection or a specific immunization for example, uh, in the in childhood, many people suffer from uh, chickenpox. Okay, so whenever we get that particular uh, virus which is affecting us, our body develops an antibodies against it, and then it still remembers. So once a person has developed chickenpox, and the second time. It's a very rare for him to develop because the body already has produced antibodies against it. That is an act active active immunity so we develop immunity in two forms actively and passively okay active immunity is the most common form where we protect our body from okay from various infections okay so that is result of infection or specific immunization for example uh, from childhood we are been immunated against various what with the various diseases for example we have been given you must have seen children getting bcg vaccine this is a different vaccine which has been given so that the children can be protected from various diseases communicable diseases right so this is what not only communicable non-communicable diseases also okay so we the individual develops and result of infection or specific immunization usually associated with the presence of antibodies, microbial toxin or cells that have specific action on the microorganism concerned with a particular infectious disease. Now what you mean by all this thing is, uh, we will be studying more about this. In active immunity, our body tries to produce, the ultimate thing is when he, it sees an antigen, ideally it produces an antibodies and this antibodies are so smart that they remember that this is the particular organism which had come and the next time if, if the person is been infected by it then he is protected 
in the simple form I said you what is an active immunity next is active immunity develops against a particular organism or agent in the following three ways that is what we are talking Kaise? how is going to develop how active immunity is going to develop in our body the first thing is following clinical infection just i gave you an example if a person is suffering from chicken pox rubella measles okay if a person is suffering from this particular type of disease okay then the body itself produces okay the body itself produces antibodies against it okay once it has been affected the next time there are very less chance that a person can again get a chicken pox okay the first is following a clinical infection means an infection has occurred in the body as you know you must be knowing the different clinical manifestation of chicken pox you get blisters which are filled with fluid right so once the infection has occurred and it has cured the person develops inside the person develops an antibodies Next is following subclinical or inapparent. What do you mean by subclinical and inapparent infection, which are asymptomatic? Asymptomatic means there are no signs and symptoms much seen. Okay, just example polio, diphtheria, or this is most common. Following an immunization with an antigen that may be killed a vaccine. live attenuated vaccine or a toxin now what you mean by this is there are different types of vaccines which are available okay where we have killed vaccine killed vaccines means what here the particular organism is in a killed form and that has been instilled inside the person through an injection and the person develops antibodies against it okay the next is live attenuated attenuated means what weakened okay that particular organism or germ is been weakened in a weak form it has been instilled inside our body and then the uh, the person develops antibodies against it and the next is toxoid toxoid is nothing but the harmful toxins which are produced by that particular microorganism that that particular toxin is been instilled inside so that our body develops a particular immunity against it or antibodies against it like toxoid we have tetanus toxoid okay which protects us from tetanus are you understanding this is how we develop active immunity next is the types natural immunity is acquired from exposure to the disease organism through infection with the actual disease this is an example which i gave you if i i am suffering or i have i have suffered yes i have suffered with chicken pox so my body has developed antibodies against it and next time whenever if there are chance that i can get it but this is a very rare that i will be suffering that particular disease because my body has already produced are you understanding and the second natural immunity and the second is vaccine induced means i am giving immunization okay i am giving some vaccine to the person because of that the person has developed immunity okay is acquired through the introduction of a killed or weakened as i said live attenuated is nothing but weakened weak form of the disease organism through vac- vaccination okay so these are the two types first is natural second is vaccine induced next is passive immunity the passive word only what do you what do you mean by passive where well, you don't have to take much efforts okay passively it is coming to us when antibodies produced in one body are transferred to another to induce protection against the disease it is known as passive immunity where your body is not doing anything but you are getting okay you are getting through someone okay so most commonly a mother gives antibodies to the child okay to the infant so when antibodies are produced in one body example a human being a woman or a mother okay and she is transferring it to a child then it is called as a passive immunity how she is transferring through milk okay through breast milk or through placenta okay so that is called as a passive immunity in other words in passive immunity antibodies are not produced in a person but ready made antibodies are administered okay so one is a form where it has been transferred from the mother to the child or sometimes we uh, administer or give injections to the person okay directly we instill antibodies inside the body are you understanding this is passive immunity now remember active immunity what we had there is a natural one where you suffer a disease and there is a protection 
which is developed by the body or you are getting some vaccine or you are taking immunization okay but passive is you are been given antibodies where the body is not producing anything okay you are been given it so let us see further about passive immunity so passive immunity may be induced through one of the following means the maternal okay maternal means mothers maternal antibodies are transferred to the fetus through this is what i said placenta or breast milk and breast milk the fetus and a newborn till 6 month after birth have antibody mediated immunity that is how is the uh, child or or how is the infant having the immunity through mother so it is called as antibody which he has got from the mother okay that is antibody mediated or that is a mediator how he is getting immunity okay that's why it's always very important that the child should be given proper breast milk okay and next the one is this commonly is happening and the second is either we are giving some injections to the patient or to a client administration of antibody containing preparation that is immunoglobulin or anti serum that is we are instilling inside immunoglobulins to the patients are you understanding that is coming as a passive immunity passive immunity antibodies are administered inside or given from mother to the fetus is called as a passive immunity hope so you understood very small in a concise way i brought for you in detail you will be studying in microbiology okay next what you should know is universal immunization program immunization program is one of the key intervention for protection of children this is very important why we are having universal immunization program to protect our children from life threatening conditions there are so many commonly the children are affected from respiratory disorders right in order to protect them from it we are having this universal immunization program okay let us see what are the different diseases which are been prevented with this so under universal immunization program government of india is providing vaccination to prevent seven vaccine preventable diseases so what are the seven vaccine preventable diseases diphtheria pertussis which is also called as whooping cough tetanus polio measles severe form of childhood tuberculosis hepatitis b hemophilus influenza type b and diarrhea okay now here if you can see i have highlight or i have highlighted over here you can see this 1 2 3 4 5 now this five diseases can be prevented with a vaccine we call as pentavalent okay pentavalent injection is been given by penta penta means five this five diseases can be prevented with that particular vaccine okay now there are different vaccine we'll be seeing according to the age wise how it is given how much ml has been administered okay which area is been selected for administration of this medication okay but i have just highlighted because further we'll be reading about pentavalent and you should be aware enough right so diphtheria pertussis tetanus hepatitis b and hemophilus influenza that is type b can be prevented with injection pentavalent okay and next we will also seeing about dpt dpt is nothing but those uh, what all diseases we can get prevented from diphtheria pertussis and tetanus okay next we are also going to see about opv that is oral polio virus vaccine okay this are the different and diarrhea is prevented with rota virus okay rota virus vaccine is there so let us see the schedule so it is called as national immunization schedule nis national immunization schedule if you can see over here we have bcg vaccine okay which is given for prevention of tuberculosis in children okay and as you can see it is given always it is given at birth it is always given at birth but or as early as possible till 1 year of age that means if it is missed if that dose is not given then you have to complete that dose within 1 year okay and how much is the most commonly is given 0.1 ml okay and intradermal this is very important where it is how it is administered intradermal that uh, that particular mark remains okay and you can nicely say whether the person has taken um, this bcg vaccine or not okay is always given in the left upper arm over here left upper arm clear enough yes 
Next is hepatitis B birth dose. At birth, most commonly is given. So, you can see BCG, hepatitis B and OPV is given at birth. We always say at zero. Okay, so at birth, this is given or it is not given, then as early as possible within 24 hours. Okay, hepatitis B. 0.5 ml. Now, it is what? Intramuscular. Hope so. Intramuscular means we are going to instill inside a muscle. Okay, and what is the site commonly used? anterolateral side of mid thigh left okay so on the left side we are going to give and the anterior anterior this is anti anterior means this is anterior posterior so this is anterior lateral means at the thigh region we are going to anterior side but the lateral side okay mid thigh where we are going to give this injection next is opv opv is nothing but oral polio virus vaccine Okay, you must have heard about uh, about being uh, advertised about uh, polio vaccine that you have to give, uh, well then you have to give two drops to the children, right? So at birth or as uh, as early as possible within first 15 days. Okay, so two drops and it's given orally. Next is OPV 1, 2 and 3. Okay, the first, second and third. So we always have zero okay and then one two and three so this three is very important has to be given at the time of birth okay at the time of birth and then we give this opv one two and three and this one two and three dose is given at sixth week tenth week and four this has to be followed so you can remember like this six ten fourteen six ten fourteen okay now how can you remember so you just add on 6 plus 4, 10, 10 plus 4, 14. Okay, so 6, 10, 14. But don't, uh, this just for your easy remembrance, I said it. Okay, so we again, we give only two drops orally. Okay, so this is one further, there are many. Next, we give IPV, that is inactivated polio vaccine. Now, this is given intramuscular. Okay. 14th week at 14th week we can give to the child 0.5 ml im okay now this is given anterolateral side of mid thigh but on the right side now you can you you have to rotate okay you can't be giving at always at the one side so this is given at the right side of the thigh region okay next this is what i was saying pentavalent okay that we have seen the five main diseases which it prevents from that is why the word is penta okay so first second and third again the same thing six 10 and 14th week 6 10 and 14th week how much it has to be given 0.5 ml commonly given im intramuscular okay and this is given on the anterolateral side of the mid thigh but on the left okay on the left side rotavirus vaccine now this i said it prevents from the severe diarrhea in the children okay so again the same thing 6 10 and 14th weeks Five drops given orally. Next we have measles. Okay, measles first dose is given at nine completed months. Okay, it is given at the ninth month. It means once the child has completed total nine months, after nine months we can give him. Now, so most common is given at the ninth month and nine months to twelve months also you can give. Give up to five years if not received. It is said that give up to five years. If the person or the child has not received in the 9 to 12 month. 0.5 ml subcutaneous right upper arm. Okay, so right upper arm. BCG was the left upper arm but that was intradermal. Okay, in the dermis. Next is vitamin A. Now vitamin A, in, uh, this is given, orally it is given to uh, develop good vision. Also to have immunity also it plays a very important role in immunity so it is given the first dose is given along with measles at the ninth month and how much it is given it is one ml but we say it as one the main unit is one lakh international unit okay remember it is given orally now this will take time for you to remember the all the site and ml but at least you should be aware enough at what age what has to be administered okay Next is about a child. So, first is DPT, okay. We have seen diphtheria, pertussis, right, tetanus. So, that is the first booster dose is given at the 16 to 24 months, okay. 
0.5 ml intramuscular anterolateral side of mid thigh left now opv booster now booster doses are always given to have enhanced immunity in the child okay booster so again the same thing is very easy 16 to 24 there it was if you remember 6 10 and 14 so here is 16 to 24 16 to 24 months okay again measles second dose is also given between 16 to 24 months okay 0.5 ml subcutaneous right upper arm and vitamin a second to ninth doses are given 16 months with dpt as we have seen this two upper booster doses along with that we can give vitamin a then one dose every six months up to the five years now this is carried out with other uh, what, you, what you can see here as this is given this is just an oral thing na? so you can be administered along with it okay so uh, you just remember that vitamin a has been given along with dpt and opv booster and then one dose every six months next is since first booster is there for dpt there is a second one also the second one is given in five to six years again the same you can see 0.5 ml intramuscular which can be shifted to left upper arm okay now since the child is grown up you can instead of giving in thighs it can be given in the left upper arm okay now remember it is the im injection not sub q im injection and the last is tt okay that is tetanus toxide which is given okay to 10 at the 10th or the 16 year to prevent from disease that is tetanus okay it is given intramuscular 0.5 ml and upper arm hope so you understood the whole schedule okay at what is given at birth then followed by till what is given to the child okay thank you